Warning, I have based this video on what has worked for me in the past, so I may come across as opinionated and self-obsessed. You have been warned. Finishing something is hard, and to finish it to the best of our ability, impossible. We always aim too high and often have nothing to show to the world because of it. Forums are rife with people criticising others yet having nothing to show for themselves. In this video I explain how I have overcome problems in the past and I hope that it will help you too, regardless of what you're trying to make, be it a map, game or pretty sewing pattern. Though I will be mainly talking about mapping. First, go away and look at the projects that you have finished. What do they have in common? Why did you start them? I find that my best projects have the humblest of beginnings. I don't start them with any idea of how they're meant to turn out, and because of that I am happy with whatever I get. My best maps and games are those that I've built for the gameplay, with the graphics coming naturally once the map was proven to be fun. Now, what about the projects you didn't finish? Perhaps you planned to make the next Half-Life, or played something you liked and set out to copy it. Both are, in my opinion, things that doom you to fail. Even if you carry out everything you desired, they're only going to be clones of the things you tried to copy, and the chances are they won't be as good, and certainly won't be as successful. Sadly I find that the higher my hopes and inspiration to make a project, the more likely I am to fail, as they cannot live up to my expectations. Or perhaps they are still good, but in ways that I cannot see, because they aren't what I was hoping for them to be. Like how Faramir was to his father. I've never had trouble finishing the songs that I make. Unlike my maps, I never had any ideas about what I wanted them to become, but simply messed around and went with what worked. Employing this tactic in other things I work on has delivered positive results. Instead of trying to make it something, I go with what it is and build on it. This is the key to finishing a project. Oddly enough, it also makes new commercial games and movies more enjoyable once they're released, since I had no expectations from them. Suddenly, it sounds as though you have a lot less control over the project. With my music making, I found this to be the case. I was powerless to determine how the song would develop once I started off, but as I learned more about the program and what sounded right, I ended up being able to better steer the project in a direction I wanted, and began to develop my own style at the same time. Although you might get frustrated with this lack of control, I find it comforting. It's the reason that you should playtest and get feedback from others from an early stage, as it gets more difficult to adapt the project later on, as extra details gradually solidify the project into what it is. In my opinion, there are two ways of designing something this way. Starting from a point and building outwards, based on what works well in playtesting, or starting with a draft of the entire thing, then using playtesting to get the smaller details right. Both have their pros and cons. For this example, I'm going to compare my two latest maps, Balfour and Kyrenia. Balfour was gameplay based. I made a small bit of the level and worked outwards based on what was fun. I ended up with a very alien map, different to others, but in my opinion, fun. It was smaller and allowed for all different types of weapons to be used, rather than just the long range ones that are normally relied upon in CSGO. I neglected the aesthetics of the level, however and ended with a layout that played very well, but held no real relation to places within the real world. It also received criticism from players, who suggested that it should be more like other levels out there. Though I don't know whether this was a result from playtesting, or them feeling clever for seeing that mine was different and assuming it must be inferior. With my next map, Kyrenia, I did the opposite, by starting with the level overview to allow for convincing areas for buildings and other structures, as well as the size and style that gamers were used to. I left it bare so that it was easy to change the layout extensively in response to playtesting. In short, it was made the opposite way that Balfour was, working from the top down rather than from a point and working out. As a result, it ended up similar to other maps and received good feedback from those who played it, while D. Gualia, in my opinion, the best map in the competition, did extremely well for its graphics, but was shunned for being smaller and more vertically based than the other maps by the SIBO community, who seem to favour more traditional layouts, and perhaps unfairly treat maps that go against the trend. I'm sure that this trend exists in everything, and not just levels for games. Give it a go, you'll find it great fun and a refreshing change from the normal maps. How you motivate yourself also depends on who you're making the map for. If you're making it for other people, or for a competition, then it makes sense to get their feedback. With a competition, you also have a natural push to completion in the form of deadlines. Without them, you'll have to motivate yourself to finish. Simply by entering a competition, it will help to inspire you to work hard, and to finish by a certain date. Knowing that it will be enjoyed and reviewed by the community gives you even more motivation to complete it, and even if you don't make the deadline, the chances are you'll be left with something that you wouldn't have made otherwise, and is something you can then release with little extra effort. Most competitions tend to be fairly open-ended, so you can normally make the most of them to create a project that you might have been thinking about for a while, but perhaps almost needed a bit of guidance or an excuse to make. Competitions present themselves as a perfect opportunity to do so. If you're making it for yourself, however, you should be the one doing the playtesting. Make sure it's fun for you to play from the very start, and you can always play it just to remind yourself of why it's worth finishing. With my two maps, I got to the playtesting stage as soon as possible, 
Starting from a point lets you do so straight away, while if you're making the level overview there's a fair bit you need to do before you can playtest it, but you will have more control over its outcome. I'm not saying that that's necessarily a positive thing. You will however have to grit your teeth as you rush to complete the layout before you lose interest. If you struggle to do this then I recommend starting from a point as I did with Balfour. It could lead to some interesting, unexpected and original results.